Hi there. <laughs> and here I thought the technical difficulties were going to be on my side. <laughs> yes, right? I got on and then the electricity went up. So hmm. it is what it is. Well, okay. let's go ahead and get started. Um, are, are you, you think you're good? You're good now? I am. I hear an echo though. Do you have volume on somewhere else? I don't. Hold on, but let me log out just in case. I just was on, um, I was on the INCC site so I could see questions as they came in, but I don't think I'll be able to see them here on my phone. So I think we are, I think we're good. But it is so wonderful to see your beautiful face. And I'm so delighted that um, we'll get an opportunity to talk and, and share here with, um, with whoever's watching. So I'm going to get started. Hello, hello, hello. I'm Jennifer Bauer. I'm the founder of the Institute for Nature Centered Coaching. And this is our very first Facebook Live and our very first teacher feature. And so I have with me today, Leanne Anderson. Not only is she a good, dear friend, um, a brilliant woman. She is one of our teachers and she's actually going to be leading seven of our classes. Um, so she's highly active <laughs> at the Institute right now. And she's also someone who's taught me a ton with regard to plant medicine. She really first introduced me to working with the essence of plants and understanding how I can incorporate them into my own personal health as well as the work that I do with clients. And so she has inspired uh, a lot of the work that we're doing here at the Institute. And so with that, I just want to say thank you, Leanne, for doing this Facebook Live. Thank you for being one of our brilliant teachers. Um, and I'd love to just kind of jump in and start asking some questions, if that's OK. Yes, thank you, Jen, for having me. I am so honored, first of all, um, to be on the faculty, to be on this Facebook Live. Um, and the feeling is definitely mutual. I have so much from you in terms of um, coaching and, and how we show up authentically uh, for our clients. So much of our relationship has been based off of um, this mutual learning from each other. And I so look forward to continuing that here. Me too, me too. Me too. So when did you first recognize your connection to plants? So thank you for sending me the the questions in advance. It allowed me to really think about it. And, you know, I grew up in Malaysia in an urban setting. So I actually didn't have much, but then when I thought back, there was all these uh, really pertinent moments in my life. And I remember when I was about five or six playing we grew up with these um, porter and mess, uh, pestles in our kitchen. And, you know, they were just made of stone. And I would play with my sister around five or six years old. We would just pluck all the leaves in our garden and put in a little bit of water and just stir it up. And we would call it uh, masak masa, which in Malay means cooking. <laughs> so that was my very first um, sort of relationship with plants. And there was this memory that surfaced from me and it was a meditation with plants. And what it was, was when I was about 10, I started wearing glasses and my dad, who um, is very much into meditation, advised me to go out and just look at the plants without my glasses and, and telling me that if I just sat and, and stared at the plants, I would help my eyes to feel better. And so I did that, but the memory was me just standing there looking at the plant. And that was my very first meditation with plants. Beautiful. And yeah, and, and then, you know, it sort of um, snowballed from there. I remember going to Outward Bound School when I was 10 and hiking in the forest and feeling this tremendous calm and peace. And it was really, really muddy. And all these um, kids were hiking and slipping and uh, falling. And I remember myself holding onto a tree and standing right there and helping everyone pass through one of the most difficult, steepest parts. And this real uh, sense of stability. And when I think back, I think about how that was a pinnacle moment 
for me when I started to realize that I am here to help people feel safe and support it, that plants uh, are my allies in that. Yeah. Yeah. Beautiful, beautiful. And just knowing that we can feel so much stronger, just simply channeling the energy of the tree. Um, I mean, we do, right. we do yoga and you've shared a few stories about that too, which I've enjoyed. So mm -hmm. fun things. And how has your relationship with plants and their essence evolved over the years? Yeah, so I started out by just having this unconscious relationship with them. And uh, I remember when I was uh, about 16 and we had gone on a field trip and someone uh, took a picture of me, but I was just sitting uh, at a waterfall in a pond and just really uh, contemplating and felt again, that safety, that calm, that peace. and so that unconscious relationship, you know, I never could it. And then uh, moving on to experimentation in my teenagers. So my very first sort of consciousness shifting experience was, with, you know, back then we called it ganja, which is cannabis. And I am not surprised now looking back because cannabis has been a very sacred herb from 5,000 years ago in China and then used in meditation practices in Tibet and India for you know hundreds thousands of years but back then it was it was all about fun and it was all about um, this idea of going against you know the being a rebel right mm -hmm. so the the relationship has changed from the fun which is still there but to the sacred and now I approach it with this real humility and reverence and gratitude when before it was about taking and scoring now it's about receiving and really offering as well my own um love and uh any actions i can take to support them in their in their growth the plants the, their growth and the relationship that other humans have with them the other interesting way it has evolved is that when it became uh, more of a conscious relationship for me, it was when I was tackling um, digestive issues in my household. We have a lot of food allergies, emotional stress issues. A lot of that was physical, so physical manifestations of my imbalance. And at that time, plants were a tool. And so that relationship has changed now from the physical to more of the spiritual. And I no longer, I very consciously don't call them a tool anymore. And they're more like my guides, you know, my sacred guides. Mm -hmm. And they um, are there for me and speak with me, communicate with me in my imagination and my um, just deep knowing in my body. And I, and I know and resonate with that as well. It is, the, it is a special relationship that we can have when we are communicating and using it more as a relationship rather than um, thinking of it as a tool and a resource. Mm -hmm. um, how did you go from a personal practice with plant medicine to a professional one? Yeah, so that personal practice was, um, again, it, it was, trying to heal my family and that propelled me into learning and diving deeply into nutrition so i'm a certified nutrition consultant and the few years before really pursuing that professionally i was um, doing my own research and always seeing with nutrition books and I, I would like to say that um, based on my own research, we had already embarked on healing um, modalities, which included detoxing and uh, staying away from foods that we were allergic to, as well as supplementation. Mm -hmm. But that professional part came about when I was contemplating how I was going to 
contribute to, to society after having been a mom, full-time mom for, you know, I was probably a full-time mom then for about 12 years now. Mm -hmm. And in between that, I did take a master's degree in environmental policy. And, and that has always been my uh, academic way of connecting to this yearning within me to work with the environment. Sure. And so with that uh, healing that needed to happen in my family, I found myself um, asking myself, what is it that I am so interested in that when I have spare time, I would be reading about? And to me, that was nutrition at that time. Sure. So that was my first step into doing it professionally. Once I went into nutrition school, um, the one that I went into had a heavy leaning on herbal medicine. And that really called to me. And I was also um, connected then to more people that used essential oils. So I bought my first bottle of essential oil when I was 18. And I remember it so clearly walking up to the booth. It was at the Camden Market in, in London, outside of London. And it was all these hippies. And I was really in that vibe, you know, uh, when I was younger, right, with the, all of that. And my very first aromatherapy book actually was um, around the early 90s. And I had been reading that personally and everything. And then so what happened at um, nutrition school was the lecturer saying, you know, you can't really survive as a nutrition consultant. You have to sell product. And that really didn't sit well with me. However, I did, you know, as a good student would do, uh, did do my research and wanted to do the right thing and have something on hand for my um, clients as an adjunct to what we did um, in our sessions that they could go home with. Anyway, nothing really passed my standards of, again, environmental um, scrutiny. Everything was made in a lab and full of fillers. And I um, had already been using essential oils, but it hadn't really clicked yet. But then I, I was at a, a spring craft fair at a, uh, my son's school, and my friend was talking about Young Living Essential Oils. So I walked up to her and mm -hmm. asked her about it. And what struck me then was that, wow, okay, so it is all pure, all from plants. And I knew that, but I just hadn't made that connection. This is what um, I had been looking for to offer in my practice. And the beauty about Young Living is access to the farms and to the education around plants and what they can do for us, as well as communing with the plant world. So that really sort of uh, harmonized in me, my desire to have a holistic practice where what I am uh, for is not against what I offer. Yeah, 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 yeah. And that that rings true in every engagement that I've had with you. And I appreciate that that you've held that those those standards and and really felt into what what felt ethically right for you um, to be able to offer. So that thank you. <laughs> <laughs> for, me, for me personally, um, do you believe it's important for us as individuals to have a relationship with plants? And if so, why? I already mm -hmm. kind of know the answer to that, but <laughs> right. it's it's like a resounding yes, and, <laughs> right? <laughs> and it's it's funny because um, in a lot of how I speak to my children or to anyone, it's sort of like if it's not a real yes, then it's a no, right? Um, but this yes rings so true for me especially because of um, the state of our world right now. Yeah. And in my um, perspective, so much of what has gone wrong is because we have lost our relationship with nature. And in this loss, we feel disconnected, we feel lonely, and we feel abandoned in a way. 
And that plays out in our um, way of life in which we try to accumulate so much and find and search for, you know, the Holy Grail, right? When plants are all around us, plants are literally the embodiment of sunlight, of spirit. They capture the sun and they, in their genetic code, become what they are, the beautiful flowers that bloom, that um, attract the birds and the bees and all of that. But when we uh, start to have and deepen this relationship with plants, they teach us so much. They teach us patience. They teach us about cycles of life. How many times have we maybe um, discovered something, a plant that we thought was dead, and all of a sudden it's coming alive again? And, and then we realize that they go through this cycle of you know, birth, growth, um, maturity, and death, and rebirth. And we start to learn that we are actually part of that cycle of life. And we are running ourselves down by consistently trying to out compete and achieve and do, 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 right? And so listening to plants requires this huge commitment to slowing down. And that part is uh, really nourishing to me. And I believe it would for most people. In fact, I feel like our connection and relationship with plants is connected to our right to be nourished. Mm. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Interesting. Of all the ways that you work with plant medicine, do you have a favorite and or daily practice? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I almost, I was chuckling when, when uh, I read this question because yes and no. So, <laughs> I'm pretty much a very spontaneous person, so my um, ritual is really pick up an essential oil bottle, um, inhale it deeply, so I call this a tent, I put it over my nose and it gives me this immediate um, call to presence. And it has been really, really helpful uh, to do that. And, you know, there's a lot of, like, you get caught up in, well, what essential oil is good for what symptom and all of that. And that's very much a, a Western way of using and, and healing from essential oils. And I do do that as well. You know, um, it's very useful, but on an everyday basis. I generally have uh, like a briefcase of essential oils that I walk around the house with <laughs> and I reach for any oil that's in there and um, use it for a time and then replenish it with different oils the next week. Honestly, the, my favorite is using my little biofeedback machine that tells me what my body is resonant with at that time and I fill my little briefcase with it and then I just use those oils. Um, again, always with gratitude, always with reverence, one drop is all, always enough. And um, the other way, so I came up with three ways. You asked me for one. Um, <laughs> so tea for you. <laughs> right. Tea meditation, mm -hmm. another way I can plant every single day. My husband and I have almost like a very... Um, non-negotiable time together when we sit down he has his coffee and i in tea and it is um a way for us to spend some time together sometimes in silence sometimes in um conversation but always with our plants um and medicine plant medicine you can call it that as well um and it brings us 
together and it brings our hearts there and present and it's just really beautiful and then throughout the day i have tea all the time very uh very regularly i would sit down and meditate with the plant spirits and call in um whichever plant i am drinking and do a little journey with her or him right they and uh that is always very profound for me because the messages i receive are always um they touch my heart and it keeps me connected to the the wisdom that they hold and of course Say that again. I just said, and there's always such profound wisdom. But exactly. Yeah. And so that also includes uh, drinks that I have almost every day. I love my mushroom. And reiki is one that I have almost every day with my cacao. And uh, it just nourishes me so and opens my heart. And of course, there are times when I have a ceremony with them, but also it's become so much a part of my daily life that um, it is literally something that I pause for during the day to just go make it. Mm. And finally, it's sitting with plants. So I, I have my gar little garden here and it, you know, some plants can be really small or really big, but my favorite is my Tulsi plant right outside here. And I go out and I say hi to her and I sit with her and I, um, I tend to her. So that's another great uh, way I love to communicate with, you know, plants on a daily basis. Yeah. I love it. I love it. I love it. Um, of the seven classes you're teaching at INCC, and I'll just go ahead and list them off. So we have Nature as Teacher, Forest Medicine 1 and 2 that you're co-teaching with Anne, Shaking, the most primal form of medicine, Chinese healing arts, and healing plants. Um, two of the classes in that. So of all those seven classes, which are you most looking forward to teaching and why? I would say it's nature as teacher mm -hmm. only because I feel it's very foundational to mm -hmm. building on relationship with plants. And in that class, I go into just really noticing, first of all, and becoming aware of their presence in our lives, going out and sitting with them and feeling into with our senses what is around us as we are immersed in nature. And then um, also going into the chakras, our energetic centers, and how the elements that are associated with the chakras informs us allows us to learn metaphorically from nature itself. And it is a, a pretty uh, comprehensive module, but I feel like that when we go through that, it's going to allow the students to get into this space of really starting to notice all aspects of their lives how nature interacts with their um, with their energy centers as well as how then they express it from there so i'm excited for that one yeah me too, me too, me too. <laughs> anything else you want to add before we close out this interview um well i want to really encourage anyone who has felt this connection to nature, but haven't quite, uh, you know, become consciously aware of the ability to really um, live from a place of connectedness to check us out. Because one thing I do notice is that almost every single person in the world, you know, that's a strong statement, Almost everyone would agree that, yes, when I go out into nature, I feel better. Yeah. Um, but there's so much more to it. There's this depth to it that we go into in this course that 
really um, takes you to this place of becoming one with nature. Yeah. Again, changing that relationship, not just a, oh, I'm stressed, I'm gonna book a vacation to Hawaii, right? Yeah. And, and then not really thinking about the impact of that or the, the way we live our life in compartments of now I'm working, tomorrow I'm going on vacation, now I come back to work. And so how can we become one with nature and that is going to contribute to the healing of yourself, people around you, once you coach taking people as well as it's going to make an impact uh, in the way we contribute to the healing of Mother Earth. Yeah. So, yeah. A beautiful reciprocal relationship that we have with her. Mm hmm Yes. Fascinating. Well, thank you again, Leanne, for taking time to answer some questions. I am so, so, so grateful that you are one of our teachers. I think all the students are really beautiful, wonderful, wise hands when they get mm -hmm. to take, uh, take your classes. Our registration closes tomorrow, Wednesday, May 26th for our summer cohort. So if you have been called to join us, I encourage you to get on it. <laughs> this is only about 24 hours left to be able to register um, and get in on, on this beautiful, delicious set of classes that we're offering. So thank you so much for your time. Thank you for watching. Thank you, Leanne, for sharing your wisdom. And we'll see you all later. Thank you, Jen. And um, I just want to say, download this video so we can post it elsewhere as well. Yes, definitely, definitely. Great. All right. Mwah, mwah, mwah. So much gratitude to you. Enjoy the rest of your day. Bye.